I am devastated. Louis Vuitton blocked me. Okay, this is gonna be a story time video at this point. As you can see, I'm at the uh, beach. There's water behind me, beautiful place. I'm traveling right now. Ever since the lockdown has ended, I've been traveling a lot, you know, and uh, every time I go to a new place, I go to Louis Vuitton. Here I have my little Posh Toilet 15. I always travel with it. And I get a little special memory of the place. Also because Louis Vuitton is my favorite brand for traveling. They just have the best travel accessories and really they never let me down, right? I'm not sponsored by Louis, by the way. I buy all these things myself with my money. So there's no sponsorship involved here. Uh, how could there be? Because I got a really sad story to share with you. So um, yeah, Louis Vuitton is in this particular place I am right now, blocked me. Okay, now we're going to get to the whole uh, deets and details moment of this, but first subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also push the join button, become a member today, get access to extra perks and become a member today. Also, you can join me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. So as I said, I am here uh, in this wonderful, wonderful place. The sun is gorgeous. The water is gorgeous. I am just, the beaches are amazing. Seriously, it's just beautiful. And it's also important to note that it, as I am filming, it is January. So uh, it's not season time. You know, there's not tourists around. It's quite empty. It's very, very chill. Like I, I literally feel like I have entire beaches just to myself. There's nobody there. So obviously also luxury shopping is relatively chill. The shops are not full. There's not a lot of people in them. So it's a little bit, you know, it's more of a comfortable experience also shopping, which is a great thing. Now I've been wanting, I have my list of canvas Louis Vuitton pieces that I want since years. And I'm kind of slowly going through that list, you know, as I travel to different places, I take little parts off the list, depending where I am, where I go to. So obviously now being in this place, I'm like, okay, let's see if they have a few pieces I'm looking for. And mind you, my Louis Vuitton canvas monogram list is not that big anymore because Louis Vuitton has been reducing uh, the products that they're making uh, in monogram canvas. Yes, they want us to buy more leather. Um, I've spoken to a sales associate in my hometown uh, at Louis Vuitton, and they did confirm to me, Jacob, actually, even our management keeps telling us, hey, try to push more of the leather pieces, try to push more of the jewelry like try to make the customer buy more leather, jewelry, perfumes, homeware, clothing. Of course, they want you to buy apparel, but try not to push the canvas ever. They want to get away from that, which is a pity because to me, Louis Vuitton, I'm sorry, Louis, to have to tell you this, but if you take away the, the canvas, I'll, there's nothing I'll be buying from you anymore because that's all I really like. I don't care for Louis Vuitton leather bags. I don't care for their apparel. I don't care for their jewelry. For me, this is their strength and they should be proud of it. Uh, and just, they should keep pushing this instead of kind of trying to, you know, anyway, that's a whole other story for another time. But so when you're asking for certain monogram pieces, when you're traveling through different Louis Vuitton boutiques or shops, they call them, I've been to several now since I've been traveling all over the world and everywhere I went, you know, sure, they're going to have their trunks, all the pieces that you can order, made to order, you know, for travel purpose. They, they promote those. They're, they're, you know, really shown very well in their boutiques because they're very proud of that heritage. But if you're talking about Speedies, if you're talking about Neverfulls, uh, the Matisse, if you're talking about, well, Pochette Accessoires, you can forget about it. Uh, the Noe, or Noe, BB Noe, th all of those are kind of hidden. You don't really, they don't put them out there. I haven't seen a Speedy, regular monogram Speedy, just placed in a, in a shop, in a Louis Vuitton shop. Gosh, it's been years now. You have to ask for it, then they open a special drawer, and then they kind of put it out for you to see. They've discontinued the poche toilette, uh, the... Toiletry pouches, 15, 19, 26. Uh, I haven't seen the Kirigami monogram pouches in a while either. So, you know, it's 
but they, they show you more and more leather. So it's already a special thing. You enter, you, you, it's kind of becoming almost like when you go to Hermes and you talk about the heritage leathers, the box calf, the Barenia, you know, the Milo lambskin, like they kind of hear you talk about, they like know that you're in the know and then they treat you differently. It, it's becoming a little bit like that at Louis as well. So if you, if you kind of know what you're looking for and they have to pull a, open a drawer to show it to you, they're like, oh, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. So I go to this Louis Vuitton store right here in this particular place I'm at. And I ask for a Speedy uh, 35, because as you all know, go check out my other video on the Speedy 35 I purchased a while ago, end of August last year and terrible. <laughs> experience there because the bag was flawed. So I returned it five days later and got my money back. So I'm still on the lookout for a really, really pristine, perfect, perfectly produced Speedy 35, of course, directly from Louis Vuitton from their shops. So I entered this beautiful, it's like a little boutique shop. It is a candy. Okay. I'm not going to tell you particularly the location of this place just yet, at least because a lot went down. Okay. And I don't want anybody to get in ov overly overt trouble. I mean, you never know, but this is the thing. Beautiful location, beautiful little boutique shop. It's like a little candy, really, really adorable with like plants growing from the ceilings in one room. They have like a circular room. Then they have a little garden, like a little niche perfume area where you can test the perfumes. I mean, it is like a spa. Okay. Gorgeous. Nobody's in the store, just a couple of sales associates and the security guard and me, <laughs> me, myself and I. So I enter, I'm like, Oh wow, this is really pretty. So, so I was like, Hey, uh, you know, the, the sales associate, the first one that looked at me, I connected with them and I said, I'm looking for a couple of pieces. And this particular person said, sure, let me, you know, they took their little phone where they type in whatever you want. It already begins here because I'm asking for a packing cube small. And this person says, what's that? Now, I've experienced this in other Louis Vuitton shops as well, where the sales associates did not know what the packing cube is. It's just not that popular, I guess. But I have my medium sized packing cube right here. I travel with it all the time and has all my makeup in here. Um, I love this thing to bits. I just wanted the smaller one as well for maybe not like huge travels, but just like, and it's half the size of this. So it'd be like this big and I could put perfumes in there. I could put my makeup brushes in there. It's just a really, really great thing. I love these pieces. So anyway, now this person doesn't know what it is. They also speak another language as well, right? Another language, which I understand, but with me, they're speaking English. So another sales associate comes by and starts speaking in that other language with the sales associate. Mind you, I understand the other language. And the other sales associate says to my sales associate, oh, you know, they change the names all the time. And sometimes you just don't know the name of things. So then I switch to their language and I say, no, no, this has not changed name. It has had the same name since, since 2018. That's the name. You can type it into your search engine on the Louis Vuitton app, whatever you have on your phone, and you'll find it. It's actually really easy. She looks at me like, you know, and leaves. Anyway, my sales associate is now with me, types in packing cube. In fact, the packing cube pops up in three different sizes. And the sales associate looks and finds the petit model, the, the small model that I want and says, oh yes, I actually have one in stock. Goes back because obviously those things are not out and about and on display. So they go into the back, they find it, they bring it out. And I said, you know, while I'm here, I've had really bad luck. And I start explaining, I'm very open, you guys, I don't do any fakery. I'm very open to all sales associates. Associates, I talked and I said, you know, while we're at it, I've had really bad luck with the Speedy 35. Um, I bought one, I had to return it because it was flawed. And then, you know, I'm traveling quite a bit lately. And every time I go to a new city, I check out Louis Vuitton and I ask if they have a speedy 35 and a lot of boutiques don't have, a lot of shops don't have it at all, uh, because it's a very big bag. And a lot of people are not into big bags at the moment. Everybody wants the tiny bags. So, but every time I did find one, it was flawed, not the best quality. So do you have a speedy 35? I could check. 
So the sales associate looks, no problem, checks on their little Gidget and sees that they have one in stock. I'm like, oh, great. Can we see it? Sure. Goes to the back, brings out the Speedy. I start inspecting the Speedy. And uh, while I'm inspecting it, I say, you know, I'm also a collector because I want these pieces to be pristine. Otherwise, I could just buy them secondhand for the fraction of the cost. I just don't want to. I want to buy it new at Louis. I want this whole experience. It's a beautiful experience. This is my Disneyland. It makes me feel amazing. By the way, no drinks were offered. I was actually standing. I wasn't even asked to sit. I'm not the person to push for drinks. So fine. If I wasn't even offered water, okay. So I'm looking at the Speedy. When I'm looking at the Speedy, the sales associate says, are you a client of ours? I was like, well, yeah, I've been just telling you I bought a couple of, yes, I am a client. Um, well, can I have your name, your data? So I give them my email address. They cannot find my profile. So they're like, okay, spell out your name, your surname. I do all that. Then they find my profile. However, they don't see the address in my profile. I'm like, that's impossible. I've been ordering online from Louis and I've been, I've been buying in shop. I receive uh, letters from you at home. You know, I receive posts from you. I just, I don't receive just emails. I also receive material posts. You have my address. Well, type it in for us. So I retype the entire address. At this point, this sales associate becomes a little cocky, but I don't know why, honestly. I mean, I really don't know why. You know, I'm always dressed the same way I'm always dressed. I was not given a weird treatment as if like, oh, you're not dressed well enough, or they did not give me the vibe of me being sus in any way. Uh, but hey, maybe I was looking sus to maybe I look like a reseller. I don't know. But the thing is this, once I gave my address name, you know, all that data that the person said was missing, they kind of slide to me their iPad with the information. They said, well, you see, there's information missing. And is this your birthday? The birthday said 2012. I'm like, so wait, I'm 10 years old. Um, I look terrible for my age. What are you talking about? <laughs> 11 years old. We're in 2023 now, right? So am I like, what am I turning 11 now? No, this is not my birthday. What is this? Everything was wrong. But 2012 was the first uh, date that I purchased from the Louis Vuitton online shop, something. So that's the date they had there. And I was like, hey, this is maybe not my birth date. You have the date of my first purchase online with you guys, with your new system. And the sales associate goes, maybe, but, uh, well, let me just check, you know. And then they go to the computer, the main computer at the cash register and say, oh, I cannot sell you the Speedy 35. I'm like, excuse me, why? And they say, well, because you already have three. And I'm like, three? I only have zero. <laughs> I have zero Speedy 35. I have a Speedy 30 that I bought two years ago now, you know, like right before Halloween 2020, uh, 2021, 2021, Halloween 2021. I was like, I have a Speedy 30, but that's like almost two years ago. I don't have a Speedy 35. And the only Speedy 35 I bought, I brought it back immediately because it was flawed. At this point, they look at me and they say, and they look at me like this. Well, you have three, so I cannot sell you one. So they're implying that I'm lying. I'm like, excuse me? I don't have a Speedy 35. I bought one, you can see it in the system, and I brought it back five days later. That's it. No, I see another one. Listen, um, that's fine because uh, since you bought one, um, August slash September, you got to wait six months. So you can buy your Speedy in March. You can buy another your next Speedy in March. Until then, you cannot buy a Speedy. But if you want, you can still purchase the uh, packing cube in small. I'm like, oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on a minute. I don't have a Speedy 35 in my possession. You can see that in your system because you can see that I returned a bag. Or are you reading it wrong? You see me buying a bag and you see me returning a bag. Are you reading that as if I had two bags? Because 
I returned it back. And third, Speedy 35, where's the third one? Where do you see the purchase of the third one? Yeah, no, I see it in the system. At this point, I'm like, I get angry because I'm like, I don't have a Speedy 30. What are you talking about? At this point, I switched the conversation to, hey, did somebody from Louis Vuitton, maybe because I've been traveling a lot lately, maybe some sales associate hacked my account to sell some extra bag to their client that is maybe doing some weird shady reseller stuff. Like, and at this point, I start talking to the sales associate, telling them, hold on a minute. I need to know all the information here because I don't own a Speedy 35. And if you're telling me that according to your system, I have three of them, well, then something terrible is happening here because that means that one of your sales associates has used my client account to sell on the side extra speedies to somebody. Do you understand how terrible and grave this is? At this point, they go, well, uh, you know, I can try to just scan it and try to sell it to you anyway, but the system won't allow me. You know, like very little Britain, the computer says no, <laughs> you know. So I'm like, yeah, try it. So at this point, we're going to find out later in part two, yes, because this story is a long one and there's going to be a part two. So stay tuned for part two because it just gets more crazy in part two. But anyway, so... And part two is coming out tomorrow, by the way. Um, so she's like doing like she's scanning the bag, but she's kind of hiding it behind the computer. She says, yeah, no, it won't let me sell you the bag. I'm sorry. I'm like, did she scan the bag? What is going on here? What? <laughs> she, what is going on here? And I'm like, do I pull a Karen at this point? Like, do I say like, can I talk to the manager? I'm like, you know what, Jacob, you got YouTube. <laughs> you can expose the situation in other ways, except there's a part two in which, well, the store manager did get involved after all, but that's all for part two. But so we're not there yet. So I'm like, um, so you're not going to sell me the Speedy 35. By the way, little note, side note, somebody was with me at Louis. Okay. I was not alone there. This sales associate had the opportunity this whole time to say, hey, I can't sell it to you, but I could sell it to the person you're with because I entered together with this person, right? And this sales associate never offered because, I mean, honestly, we're in two, right? I was there with another person. The other person, you know, the sales associate could have just said, Let's just make a profile for your friend. Your friend can buy the bag for you. Done. You know what I mean? The sales associate never offered that. That sales associate did not want to sell me the Speedy. Now, at this point, I'm like, well, you're banning me for some reason. Why do I look suspicious for some reason? But it, the strange thing is they said to me, but, you know, do you still wish to buy the packing cube? I can sell you the packing cube. I'm like, what is going on here? Now I get really upset and I say, you know what? This is really, really terrible customer service. I don't own a Speedy 35. You're implying that I'm lying. And now you want me, now you've treated me so poorly, but you still want to make some sort of sale. You want to sell the packing cube? Like, no, I'm not going to buy the packing cube now. No, you've just made this experience terrible for me. I'm never going to uh, forget this as long as I live. This has just been really, really bad because I mean, I'm the type of person, you know, if you attack me for some reason, and even if I'm right, I'm still going to have, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. So because she said that I have all of these speedies, I was thinking to myself, well, did I black out? Did I buy them? Like, was I drunk somewhere in some other part of the world and I bought a speed and I don't remember? I was like, wait, I have to check my credit card. Was my credit card charged? At this point, I'm starting to think the craziest stuff. I'm like, is this fraud? Um, somebody steal my credit card information and went on a shopping spree at Louis. Like I have to check all this stuff out, right? But I can't check it out then and there. I got to go back home and, you know, log into all my accounts and try to figure this out. So I started getting also scared. I wasn't just angry that they weren't selling me the freaking bag. I started thinking, oh my God, something bigger is happening here. Am I being hacked? Is my credit card information stolen? Is somebody buying Louis Vuitton stuff behind my back? for months now without me knowing, like what the hell is going on? So I am appalled, 
at this point, I tell that sales associate to their face that I think it's disgusting how they treated me and I'm just never going to forget this experience. And no, I'm not going to buy the packing cube now either. Goodbye. And I left. Took a photo in front of the, of the shop, kind of, you know, if I do a thumbnail of it, frowny face, shocked face in front of their shop and that's it. I come home. And then I contact immediately my sales associate from my hometown, Louis Vuitton shop. And I ask, I explain the whole situation to them. And I'm like, can you please help? Because something like I'm blocked at Louis here in this place where I'm at. And furthermore, I might have been hacked. Can you please look into that? Because like, I'm kind of getting scared now. And I got a response immediately. And all the details about that in the follow-up video coming out tomorrow. Be sure to watch that. Subscribe.